Kyle got you a present. Oh boy. Oh boy. What is it? I love surprises. <laughs> got you a present. Boy, I'm antsy. Come on. It's the reveal. I should have wrapped it. Do I have anything? It's all right. My my parents wouldn't expend anything on me either. Here. It's wrapped. (laughs) It's wrapped, wrapped, Kyle. Oh, God. I am a breener, <laughs> breener, wiener. Somebody made that a couple weeks ago. Katie and That's I were amazing. streaming Jack Wax games, and we did the t-shirt one, and somebody drew that and combined it with the breener wiener, and I was like, I'm ordering that for Kyle and giving it to him the next time we record. And it just came a few days ago. <laughs> oh. So that came out of the Good, Better, Better bank account. I am going to cherish the hell out of this. I don't remember whoever it was who was playing with us that night who drew that. Uh, there you go. Your art made it onto a shirt. Breeder wiener. <laughs> that drawing of you cracked me up, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, rather accurate. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Good Better Bad Bad Show. We watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Chiligo. Joined as always with Mr. Breeder Wiener himself. <laughs> Mr. Breeder Wiener himself, Kyle Hatton. Kyle, uh, it's the 110th episode. Uh, what did we do last week? We did Digital Man yes, last week. Yes. Digital Man was a, a fun 80s or 90s. It looked just looked like an 80s romp. So we went for like kind of discount sci-fi. Let's yeah. go ahead and... Kind of go back to discount period piece. So, Digital Man was this isn't a period, it's well, like, I mean, it's we'll not talk about what this, but there's yeah. parts of it they claim are. Uh, yeah, it was you, Billy. I know you did it. I aim to gun you down. Uh, so we, uh, so Digital Man was um, probably way too competent, maybe, to be on this show. It has some wacky shit in it, mm-hmm. uh, but it's uh, overall, I was like, this is kind of just an okay movie. Um, <laughs> This movie is, is anything but is, is, is no. So we've done Jezebeth one. If you move, I'll twist your head off. Uh, this is Jezebeth two, Hour of the Gun. Jezebeth one, if you recall, was basically a a glorified music video. This is that with less of a story, and that's impressive. That's impressive, because Jezebeth 1 had almost no plot, almost zero relevant story. It was mostly, like, music video, uh, some things happen, next music video, some things happen. Let's shoot in my parents' rental home for a couple days. Yeah. Funny how we fight not knowing why. I just don't understand. This is exactly the same thing, except... The plot is less coherent and 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 even more credits. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We'll get to the credits. Right. So, I don't know why we didn't think about this. I'm, I'm, I am going to rip the fuck out of this person. I don't know why we didn't think about this when we were coming up in the film industry in film world. Brian, why not write and shoot? Only an hour worth of footage, yeah, and then just pat out the last thirty minutes, yeah. with fucking credits, yeah, and then you can slap it on Amazon as a feature length film, baby. <laughs> Twenty two <laughs> minutes of fucking credits. This movie is filler. It's all filler. All of it. It's, there's like four scenes. But there's no story to begin with. No, no, that's what I mean. It's only filler. And then they still have 30 minutes of credits, basically. So, Jezebeth 1, the story. Here's the other thing. This is Jezebeth 2, Hour of the Gun. Has zero connection. Zero 
mm-hmm. uh, connective tissue with Jezebeth one. Mm, except vampires. That's they, it. They, they, she wasn't a vampire in the first they one. She was a demon. Place. Oh, yeah. What planted the seeds of evil within you? The ancients of a demon cult. The result is Jezebeth. I thought, well, she did have vampire teeth, but the whole idea was that she was a, uh, we'll get to it, but it it, has like no connection other than like a couple actors, the one guy who's one of the main characters, which we'll talk talk about, about, that guy's incredible. (laughs) Why? You speak of her constantly. She must have been very special. She was special, and God took her from me like a thief in the night. So this is a 2015 sequel. It's not a fucking no. sequel. Um, written and directed, again, by Damien Dante, the world's best name for a filmmaker and human being. <laughs> and I, I, I started this by saying, I really hope I don't need to remember what happens in Jezebeth 1, because I don't. And you don't. You don't. It's perfect <laughs> in that regard. Uh, and I, and this is, as soon as it starts, the music starts playing, I was like, oh, we're going to get this entire song. <laughs> The yes, credits. yes. We get it so badly that they start reusing the intro footage. I've gone by wondering the I've cried out. Yeah. yeah. And the intro footage is literally just shots of woods. Yes. And then the camera zooms in. Yes. To there's nothing. One, there's one part where it's nothing but branches, and he zooms in to more branches. Oh, it's time to make a change in my life. You shall see. And, it, and I was like, what the what yeah, am I watching? You think you're you're thinking like I'm looking like I'm like trying to crack this shit like it's a fucking like Bigfoot like sighting picture. I'm like, what is that? What's that shadow? What's that? <laughs> like it's, it's like am I supposed to be seeing something? And no, it's just let me zoom in to some random trees. It's tearing apart. For for five minutes as the, yeah. it's oh it's a fucking ridiculous. This movie is entirely ADR. Yes. Why one got help me? Why won't he tell me what to do? Entirely. It it is entirely ADR, and I will give them credit on this only in regard to not the quality, not the, well, I guess in the performance in regard that they had to match the shitty take that they did on location. Yeah. Because you could tell they did did takes where they were, like, flubbing their lines and stuff, and they had to repeat that for the ADR. Yes. (laughs) When Joseph is around, the dogs hardly seem to bark. Well, if Jezebeth finds you here, she's gonna, gonna do nothing. Yes, they're matching bad <laughs> delivery in the initial cut with bad delivery in the ADR. <laughs> so they're like stumbling over their words in the ADR. It's oh, it's so, so. Does she go everywhere with the goddamn box? With the goddamn box? This is one of the more technically incompetent films we've watched in a while. <laughs> mm. uh, it, I mean, it's, it's it, arguably not really even a movie. No, arguably. it's not. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we we the opening scene we get set up is is is, is back we think suppose this is the period piece where it's like the back 1800s. in the 18, 1881 or yeah like that. and 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 there's a gang or I don't know the plot Kyle I if you gun to my head <laughs> ask me to explain the plot of this movie I'm getting shot I don't I do not know it's what. like you know I just save us both some time <laughs> I mean I could lie to you for 30, 30 minutes or you could just shoot me in the head. I think that's probably the the right course of action, but there's a little girl who's dead, mm-hmm. and and her name we find out eventually is Abigail, and she's the daughter of a gang member who, who was killed. The girl was killed by a different member of the gang, Billy yeah. Gunn. Ringo, are you just gonna take this? Billy just killed your child. She shot her dead for no reason. There's nothing I can do. You are a coward. Killed this little girl for reasons. <laughs> we never know why. She shot her dead for no reason. And then and then our main character, Jezebeth, who is now just a vampire lady. Vampire yeah, outlaw. Va- yeah. Vampire outlaw lady, which again, in the first movie, 
Jezebeth was a a, a, a a girl who was like abused and killed by like a religious person or something like and then right it was kind of like a like at a some crucible point possessed situation by a demon and then possessed by a demon and then that's why she's like a vampire or something like mm -hmm. that in this one it's just she just is a vampire which again the the lore does not sync up to the first movie at all which not that they care but again no. why call it Jezebeth two just call yeah. it Jezebeth hour of the gun yes. or something like uh, he won't shoot me I'm gonna blow you all over the world. But so she, she's mad at Billy Gunn because Billy Gunn killed Abigail and she loved Abigail like a daughter, even though it wasn't her daughter. Yeah. It was this other gang member's daughter who does not seem upset about the fact that Billy Gunn murdered her mm -hmm. daughter. <laughs> and then we need to then we just jump 130 just years jump, later. Yeah, then we just jump 130 years later. I was like, all right, moving, I guess we're moving on. I will no longer ride out your side. My killing days are over. Jezebeth, after all this time, you turn your back on me. As I said, I'm going to kill you. Kyle. What? Okay, so I know like Kyle. I know these guys are based out of Illinois. They shot Kyle. part of this in, in <laughs> Go ahead. Arizona. Why does their house look like a Louisiana parish? It mansion? does. It does. It's a very yeah. It's a very gothic sort of look to it, which you know kind of works for the yeah for the film. But so this next also, scene is clearly on a real estate market. And yeah, they, they knew a person. Yeah, this next scene is literally five straight minutes of the same eight shots. Of a girl <laughs> swinging. Swinging, yes. Yep. That girl from the beginning who was yep. dead is now swinging on a swing, and even she gets bored halfway through. Yeah. This little girl starts like looking at the camera person, like, can I leave now? And he's like, nope. no. No. We, we're we going to swing. <laughs> We listened to an entire song while this little girl swings on a, a, a like a big chair like swing, and, for, and we see that they use the same shots over, over and, and over and over. And over. It's fucking. They, uh, it's like they shot for two days. Yeah. And they were like, all right, good enough. Yeah. They shot just a swing. Oh, you mean shot the, oh, the whole movie? Well, the whole two movie, yeah, like yeah. two days. 100%. Yeah, 100%. There's some really interesting stuff that happens with shots later. And so the only different thing we get here is shots of a dead bird occasionally, which mean nothing. Yeah. They just. <laughs> every, time they, every time they show that, they're like, yes, a visual representation of our inner angst. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and there's the because we are we are but mortal vessels slowly dying, and this is the manifestation of such. <laughs> that is absolutely what the director was thinking when he saw that dead bird. But that was just that's only in the movie because they were filming, and somebody on the on the crew the yeah, crew there's a dead bird was like, "Hey, there's a dead bird." Wait, over there. wait, <laughs> I can use that. <laughs> Exactly. Um, exactly what happened. Uh, so they shoot this dead bird, but it, it never means anything. It's just like death. Whoa. Oh, the little girl tries to go inside the house, um, and nothing really matters there. Uh, but then we cut to Jezebeth asleep, and she wakes mm. up, and she's... <laughs> Katie was watching this with me, and she wakes up and she like comes up right and and uh, she's she was sleeping wearing a push up bra, and Katie was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just a nightmare. The little girl's there. She shows up in the room, and then they speak Spanish to each other mm -hmm. for like five minutes with no subtitles. Malditos sean los creyentes del bien y el mal, porque son débiles en la sombra. No hay cielo que brille. And then guitar song. And then she is this where she plays a guitar I, I song? I think at the her? first time. Is it that quick? No, 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 not yet. This not is where yet. she okay. bites her. Because is this the uh, is this the other person? No, no, no. This is Jezebeth and the little girl. Okay. The little girl walks into the room that, that Jezebeth was sleeping in, and Jezebeth talks to her. And then looks at her, and she has vampire bites on her neck. But then Jezebeth bites her, even though she already has a... I don't understand any of it, Kyle. And again, maybe they're saying things that are compelling plot-wise that, that mean something. But there's no subtitles in a movie that's entirely in English. But they speak Spanish to each other for, like, a whole scene. But they don't tell us what anybody's saying. 
It's very interesting. Yeah. I don't, it's very strange. So I guess she turns was, the girl. I was in. also confused because I thought the little girl was like, like an aberration or something like that. A ghost or something. Yeah. She's not. She's just alive. She's a vampire, I think. Okay. Maybe. Because later they're like, oh, she was alive this whole time. Abigail lived. We, even though we thought she was dead in the beginning, she wasn't dead. I wanted to see how happy Abigail is. I believe you. Why I get the feeling you don't like her. Things were different back in 1881. We were different back then. I think. Kyle, th don't make me explain. Don't, this is no, incomprehensible. No. I, I have no, no idea. I'm sorry. Um, and then Jonah shows up, who's... Jonah's the best part okay. of this movie. So in addition to being a giant man rivaling Brian in height... Jonah, when you sold us this house, you didn't say shit about any dogs. We can talk about that later. Where's Jezebeth? Oh, he's taller than I am, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, he... he. So this guy, his name is like Drake Mephesta or something like that? Drake Mephesta is the actor. Yeah. yeah. This guy, I looked his little thing up. And so in addition to being in the first film, he was also in a documentary called The Real Vampire Files. Does he think he's a real vampire? <laughs> yes! <laughs> The idea of accepting what I am and then dealing with it was not an easy process. Even if you told somebody that you were a vampire, they would call you a, a freak or a madman and completely shun you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> the drinking blood didn't come until later on, but the first signs of something abnormal would be the sensitivity to sunlight. The hunger didn't really fully manifest until about a year afterwards. I looked at his Facebook page and his Facebook <laughs> page has like, it's like his fan page and it has his, his has like his like titles under his name. And it says like artist, musician, philosopher, <laughs> And like something else, and I was like, Fuck but, you. like he, he, they were doing the documentary thing, and it's just, just him staring like this with like like a grayed out or like it's just removed color, and then a couple of filters, and it's just like people are always afraid of what they don't understand, <laughs> stuff like that. For this vampire documentary, I'm like, what is going on? Yes, me and Drake have a five and a half year relationship. We kind of had this very strong bond. Obviously, I trust him very much. It's like helping anybody who needs help. So, so Jonah's there. He's he has he's I don't even. They're talking on the gazebo or in the gazebo. Or yeah, something. he's, he's like talking the about how like the vampire dude. He's the, he's their ma, he's the father apparently of Jezebeth okay. and uh, Cyanide, who's Jezebeth's sister, the other character. So Jezebeth and Cyanide are coming in on horseback. And they have, they say they have some unfinished business business from 100, I assume this is the Billy Gunn thing. They mm -hmm. don't really care. I don't really care. I have some unfinished business. Unfinished business from a very long time ago. What is it? The one we surf lies not in heaven. When the vampire is destroyed... Does it go to hell? But Jezebeth is like, I saw Abigail, she's alive. I saw Abigail in my room. A human child cannot come back from the dead. And then they go down into the basement, Maybe and it's so. Sidai and Jezebeth, and they're hanging out in the basement. And and he, and and Sinai doesn't believe her that that Abigail's like alive. She's like, no, I don't know. Are you sure? And and they're both standing there, and then Jezebeth <laughs> is just like suddenly like, yeah, look, and the Whoa! little girl. And the camera. Oh my God, yeah. she's there. Abigail's gone. She's dead, and she's never coming back. Look. The camera. She was clearly standing right in front of them the whole time. What this is, what this is relative to the audience, is a test of object permanence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, my favorite thing. It, it was. It was Peekaboo, where'd he go? Huh. <laughs> That's amazing. Abigail is mine now. That much I know. We're entered, and then it cuts away from that. The, the, the narrative flow of this movie is there's none. It's just it cuts from scene to scene willy nilly. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be impossible to explain. We're introduced to the two douchey guys. Carl Trulane at your service. Carl, what the hell are you doing here? Oh, do you mean how did I get in? Perhaps I should ask you the same question. Yeah, well, if Jezebeth finds you here, she's gonna... Gonna do nothing. 
um, the club owner and his Carl, the guy who doesn't matter but right. is somehow like, inheriting I, I, the I'm house. I'm here to inherit stuff and also a, it, it serves no purpose. This letter was written by Jacoba. His words must be carried out. So Carl shares with you equally in the fortune left behind. That's right. And that includes his house? Yes! And, and literally it has no function in the plot. He just disappears. Although we're... Maybe we have to wait for Jezebeth part three. Jezebeth part three. God, if only they're making Jezebeth part three. There's also, uh, Kyle, explain this to me. There's this clock that they find in the basement that we look at numerous times. And Jezebeth is like, oh, look, a clock. And again, this is the same thing with the dead bird where they found this clock in this basement they were filming in. And they're like, this means something. Mm -hmm. Time. Time, Time stood still for so long. Yeah. We are all look, look, the clock, it moves again, even <laughs> though whenever we showed you the back of it earlier, it was like battery power. Yeah, yeah it clearly doesn't have a battery. It's my Dorian Gray clock. I, I can't explain this. There's another scene right after this where Je Jezebeth is talking to Carl and the and the douchey guy, and Jonah's there, and they're talking about how Jonah saying that Jezebeth wants to move to Nevada for some reason. Jezebeth wants to get away from him? And I quite agree. Where will you go? Hmm. Jezebel's been talking about moving to Nevada. Guys, I don't. I don't know. I don't understand what any of this is supposed to mean. Oh, Jonah. Uh, Jezebel's not there yet. That because this this is the incomprehensible editing of the story. Oh, it's right. Jonah and these two guys talking in the living room. Yeah. About like Jezebel or whatever. And and jo and and one of them says to Jonah, "You're gonna have to tell Jezebel." Something. I don't even know if it ever comes this back. This note like, means... Yeah. yeah, you have to give her the note. Yeah. I'll give it to her when I mean to. Yeah, and then and then all of a sudden it cuts to Jezebeth on the stairwell. Tell me what, Jonah! I will tell Jezebeth when I'm ready. And you will bring her the letter. Tell me what, Jonah? Why is Carl here again? She's there. And then, and then it cuts. You don't need to know. <laughs> and then it cuts. And she's in a different room with the little girl. What? Why is Carl here again? I won't even ask you how you got in. We're like, what? what? We just ab abruptly ended that scene. She's like, tell me what, Joni. You think there's going to be a big like confrontation? No, it's just moving on to a different scene entirely with her with that little girl walking. I, dude, look, I look, don't. Look, look, look. We got to hold up this conversation for a second. I got to go talk to the little girl that nobody believes is here except me. Yeah. Uh, and, and and we find out that Billy Gunn wants to kill Jezebeth for reasons. reasons. Again, and none of it matters. None of it makes sense. What does Billy Gunn want? Uh, and this is guitar time. This is where she goes to talk to a little girl. And then... Would sings. you like to hear me play guitar? Uh, yeah. She, sa <laughs> she says, would you like to hear me play guitar? Will you like to hear me play? And the little girl in this movie communicates the whole time with a chalkboard, mm -hmm. and she goes to write on it, and I was really hoping she was just going to write no and turn it around. <laughs> Will you like to hear me play? And she's like, oh, okay. But no, the little girl writes yes, and then we lit, we sit. Yes, play master of puppets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, free bird or GTFO. <laughs> um, uh, but so so then we have to sit and watch uh, Jezebeth play guitar and sing an entire song to this little girl. Walking through the woods with the hope of seeing you again. Well, thank God that the uh, quality that we get is about as mastered as you can get because yeah. it's all dropped in. Uh, yeah, that is true. It is It is much better than if they had done it in whatever ADR booth they were recording mm -hmm. ADR in. Walking through the woods with the hope of seeing you again Trying to be with tears around my neck, no one can see. Um, so she sings the song. We watch it all just like in one take. We just sit there and watch her play this mm -hmm. whole song. And the little girl just has to sit there and pretend to care <laughs> like this whole time. Yep. It's like, 
it reminded me of the scene with Neil Breen talking to the the girl in the bathroom. You have to stop doing this, and the little girl's just like. What I'm thinking, what I feel. Can I leave now? <laughs> uh, um, and then it cuts back to Jezebeth talking to Jonas in the living room. Again, this is it's the, the editing. I have matters to attend to. There's, it's nothing, nothing connects. I'm wondering, obviously this was done at rocket, just a rocket pace. Yeah, they shot this uh, all, in, like you, you said, a weekend. Do you, do you think they were just trying to shoot it all as it was done in the script? Like, do you think they didn't do any storyboarding or any oh, guaranteed. Like, layout? Guaranteed. Anything? And I think a lot of it was, was was it's like they came up with shit on the spot. Like yeah. I bet, like I said, the clock thing, I bet was just something oh, yeah. they and found. Oh, the dead animals. And the dead animals and stuff is just stuff they found and like, we'll work that in somehow. I mean, if I work it in, I mean, we'll just put shots of it in the movie yeah. and never really yeah. do anything with it. Oh, God. And the dogs, the dogs at the very beginning? Tell those damn dogs. <laughs> To shut the hell up. When Joseph is around, the dogs hardly seem to bark. Where there's just like this. Oh, this owner has a bunch of dogs on the property. They'll be, you know, they'll be around. Oh, cool, cool. Let's get some shots of the dogs oh, and yeah. drop them in sporadically. Unfinished business from a very long time ago. What is it? And and there's the scene where Jonah uh, Jezebeth is talking to Jonah uh, about like her past with the gang, um, and she's like, "We drank whiskey till dawn." It's like a weird thing. But during this entire scene, Jezebeth is flying us down. Shot down by the outlaw Billy Gunn. And they keep cutting to a. The, a they use a lot of like low angle shooting up at people. Yeah. Very unflattering in this particular instance. But in this one, it's like right there. You just see her fly open like in, in the fucking front of the shot. Uh, then we cut to a biker bar because if we know anything about Damien Dante, that this motherfucker likes going to biker bars. He's a vam vampire biker. Yeah. Um, no strip club this time. No. But uh, we go to a, a, a club and and there's there's a montage of people like walking up the stairs yeah. into the club and like glancing at the camera. Do you, do you as they think walk whenever in. he was whenever he was scouting for locations, he yeah. was like, "All right, we need to find as much limestone as possible because <laughs> the basement is a limestone basement." Yeah. And then the place that they're doing this quote unquote bar in or whatever. Yeah. If you look in the back of it, it's like limestone there too. So it's like it's like that's the theme. They're like, yeah. it looks archaic and old. Yeah. And also, let's not, sh you know, maybe if you're gonna do that, maybe if you're gonna make it look old and kind of out of touch, don't have a fucking circuit breaker and air conditioning ducts like but in this, the shot. Well, yeah, but this isn't. Oh, I guess because this isn't period. This it's is all period current time. But like they're going for the, 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 yeah. Now. The thing they're going for is like we've been untouched by the advancement of time. Is that what they're going I for? I think so. I that's like that's what the out. clock was supposed to be. Oh, you're applying way more I thought know. to it. <laughs> I think they did. I'm giving them way too much Yeah, credit. that clock thing was just a clock they found in the basement they were shooting, and they stuck it on the fucking uh, mm. shelf. Um, but we get to this bar, and we get to listen to a whole another entire song because the director's friend's band. <laughs> And this is actually the best song in any of these movies. And, oh, and by the way, the uh, the, the guitar dude. Yeah, with, uh, with shitty, <laughs> shitty braids guy. Yeah. Shitty little tiny braids guy, yeah. So uh, in addition to looking shockingly like... Uh, like a member of uh, Limp Biscuit. No, like Barry Pepper. <laughs> oh, he does look like Barry Pepper, yeah. In addition to looking like Barry Pepper, he's also one of the producers for this film. Yeah, he ends up becoming a character for the yeah. rest of the movie. He's the guitar player in this band. And again, this band... Actually, like, they're not my style of music necessarily, but they seem okay, like, mm -hmm. uh, relatively to a lot of the stuff in, 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 in these movies. But they, we watched their entire fucking thing, and I love at one point it cuts to two chicks sitting on a trapeze making out. Yeah. Because again, the director is a horny thirteen-year-old hot topic employee. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, 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 that's not even the horniest thing. We're, we're going to get to it with this. Well, There's well, a moment well, later in this movie we'll get to, but oh, fuck. I, I want to get back to this dude. I want you, Brian, to take a, take a still of him, yep. put it next to Barry Pepper yep. from Battlefield Earth. <laughs> okay. And then Photoshop the little stupid nose thing <laughs> on this guy. <laughs> and it will look almost <laughs> fucking identical. While you were still learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxies. Yeah, it's like if Barry Pepper uh, joined yeah, a grunge core band <laughs> <laughs> from Battlefielder. <laughs> like, yeah. Stop thinking every bitch that comes in here is attracted to you. Look, Kayla was all over me till you opened up your ugly ass mouth. You're crazy. Bitches don't like that macho shit of yours. And then Jezebel walks in. I think it's Jezebel that walks in. No, 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 no. It's no, that it's other girl. Cyanide? No, no, it's not any of them. It's a girl looking for Jezebel. Jezebel. Sure, yeah. This scene never comes back. Yeah. It, well, it does. And after that, she's looking for Jezebel. I hear Jezebel comes in here a lot. Do you know her? Shitload of bitches come here every night. And he's like, Jezebel's not here. And then she and then ends she, up showing up at Jezebeth's house. Show, well, and then Jezebeth instantly shows up oh, yeah, in the yeah. bar, too. Yeah. Razor, I'd like to introduce you to my daughter, Jezebeth. That's right. And then, and then, like, the next scene, doesn't she show up at Jezebeth's house? I believe so. She oh, that's gets, coming up in a second. It's bitten, right? First, they got to buy guns for no reason. Yeah. There's the gun buying scene. I don't... It's just... <laughs> I, they're, they're at the bar, and Jezebeth's like, we need guns. And then she, they, they pull up a suitcase and set it on the counter, and it just has two guns in it. Two guns. It's got two guns. It's got like a revolver and like a, a, a Glock or something, and that's it. And I love they're they're not in like because normally this scene they'd be like in a foam like you know like yeah. inset insert thing. They're just rattling loose in the. He sets it up there, and they're just in the bottom of the briefcase. When he picked it up, they were like clank 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 falling everywhere. There's another point later when we get to like the quote unquote shootout. Oh God! <laughs> just oh God! Amazing. Which is actively this movie's actively trolling. There's no way this movie isn't actively trolling in some parts the part with the shootout at the end there's no way that's not intentionally <laughs> fucking with us we'll get to it but there is a zero percent chance that they weren't like we're gonna really fuck with some people this is this is peak comedy oh my god So then she's at home. Jezebeth is at home. Like I said, the woman from the bar shows up. And I love Jezebeth comes downstairs just holding kittens. Sets three kittens on the floor. They never, we never see them again. They never matter. Not, she just had kittens. They got cats and dogs. Again, this house they were in just had some kittens that were like recently born. They're like, I guess we'll put those in the movie. Yep, I don't yep. know. If one of the kittens happens to uh, be vomiting or something like that, maybe we can work on this movie. Uh... <laughs> I think you really pegged this director, Kyle. I think you've really, uh, well, maybe you can you've really like, inhabited his spirit. It, it can represent something like <laughs> us having to purge ourselves of society. You really, you really keyed in exactly on this guy's psyche. And also, also, we need some hot chicks with some boobs. <laughs> Um, I love, and this is one of those scenes a little bit. The lady walks in, and the first thing she says, she's like, I've never been in a house like this before. I've never been in a house like this. It's crazy. And then immediately the camera does a dramatic zoom into Jezebeth's what? face. Strip. It's crazy. Strip. What? And she tells her to strip. And she takes her shirt off and just stands there. And I was like, yep, horny 13-year-old movie yep. again. Turn around. I don't want to see your face. But she wants to become a vampire. And so Jezebeth bites her. And I assume she becomes a vampire. But we never see her again in this film. Nope. Bye. Oh, and then it just directly, randomly cuts to her in the basement with the little girl again from this scene. And the little girl, I don't understand this. She's talking to the little girl. She's like, look, here we are in the basement, Abigail. It's not much, but we can fix it up. It's not much, but we can fix it up. I'm like, you have a whole house. Why do you make the ghost girl stay in the basement? You can stay in the basement, all right? I don't understand, man. Yes, we can fix it up. 
Yes. Uh, and then another child shows up. What the fuck did, is any of this? Well, hang on. Did they feed that child to Abigail? Is that no? Because she phases through the door and leaves, doesn't uh, she? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause she just. But like that was the initial thing I thought is like, are they feeding this? That actually would have been cool, but no, because the little girl comes and they talk for a minute, and then the girl like, that came this, in just this place sucks. I'm going bye bye. <laughs> and and like goes through the door. I don't understand. I don't. I don't. I don't get it, Kyle. You can't go home. You're never going home ever again. So this is that note scene, but who cares? Um, <laughs> well, Carl, get down with it. Enough, Carl. Let's get this done. Jonah's got a note, and none of this, they try to make this matter, but the note is something about how Jonah's dad was a bad vampire or something. something and, and had a son they didn't know about. But who is that? Is that Carl? Yeah. Carl? Carl. That's Carl. Stay in the house, Carl. He does. He stays in the house in this one. Yep. They leave him in the house, and then he just stays there for the rest of the movie, and we Jeez. never see him again. Just looking at Carl makes me want to puke. Jonah, I will never accept Carl in this house. Um, and then this is the topless scene, Kyle. Yes. The entire time I saw this, I was like, uh, the only thing I was going through this director's head, it, the dialogue was completely incomprehensible. It was just, boobs! Boobs! That's the director. That's all the director said. Oh my Boobs. god. Boobs! The, the, no, <clears throat> she walks out of the woods. We don't know why she's topless <clears throat> because she walks out of the woods and this is Billy Gunn. Mm -hmm. She walks out of the woods with her two partners are standing there and she's topless and the camera is <clears throat> the camera <laughs> is not even looking at her. It's literally just Boobs! <laughs> has changed in over 130 years but this land is just unmistakable <laughs> i was like are you you're really 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 you know if you frame it normal you can still see the boobs they're still in yeah, the yeah, shot but brian people need to know that there are boobs in the shot it's the fucking most juvenile goddamn thing I think I've ever seen in a movie. And that's coming from us. <laughs> yeah, it is so, like, literally. I, I just can imagine the the camera op that day. Because, like, literally, it's just like, okay, we're filming. You know, we got our camera. You know damn well there, filming, there is no. The camera op is the director. Yes, 100%. Which it makes the 25 minute credits even more fucking insane because one person made this movie. <laughs> How do they have 25 minutes worth of credits, Kyle? Because they give an on-screen like little uh, little nod to all the actors for everyone, including the extras. Come back down to earth. I'm waiting all the time. Won't get you anywhere. But even then, the credits start roll. Uh, we'll get to the credits. But when the credits roll, they roll like. The slowest I've ever yeah. seen credits. Because I gotta finish that goddamn album. <sighs> and so she was shirtless for no reason. Mm -hmm. She immediately puts a shirt on. Mm -hmm. And I but it's not like she came out of her bedroom. She mm -hmm. came out of just the random woods and I was like, was she was she like going to the bathroom <laughs> topless? What? Cause she's wearing pants. I don't understand <laughs> what the fuck. Oh, okay. Uh, then she puts her her shirt, her, her top, her poncho, which we haven't talked about the pon the the attire, the the fucking costumes oh, for this movie are all and, they're all wearing jeans, black tank tops, and and like ponchos. Ponchos, but like they all have guns. Like some of them have like old fashioned old, revolver, like, revolver such, like Colts, but they or couldn't afford holsters. They put they just tucked them into their jeans. Yeah. Or carried them around most of the time, yeah. And so now uh, our people are going to Cyanide, Jezebeth, and um, Jonah, and hit the uh, and the guitar player from the band are. <laughs> they're all going to kill Billy Gunn yeah, and her gang yeah. for reasons. And then they have to take horses. Because. I love this. The movie acknowledges yeah. this. <laughs> they, they ride in on horses. Uh, 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 Jezebeth and Cyanide yeah. ride horses in. Yeah. And it cuts to Jonah. and He's like, yeah, they're just riding horses just to, for their just own. Just because. Yeah. 
There is no point, you idiot. All this horse crap is for Jezebel's amusement. Literally just because he says because they wanted to yeah. for no reason. You know, I could expose you, Jezebel, and the others. But you won't. And you know this how? They all, then they set up some cans for target practice. Oh my god, this they seems do. really stupid. This is so dumb. So she fires and they're like, hey, you hit the can. I was aiming for the other ones. <laughs> nice shot, dead eye. I was aiming for the small canes, bitch. Why would she say Why that? Why would you? Why would she say that? Just fail upwards and be, yeah. be happy with it. <laughs> yeah, just be like the rest of us and fail upwards. Um, and but no, my other uh, there's another little short scene where. Oh, right, that's the fight. That's where they fight. Mm -hmm. After that, she's like yeah. they argue about whether or not she meant to hit the can. I don't. And even it, it, this is just like the women fighting. This and is the director's like yes, yes, yes. again. <laughs> horny thirteen year old deck director like. Okay, now you guys wrestle. Brian, I don't think you quite understand. When you have these women fight like this, it is a primal nature uh, from the nurturing side of humanity. And <laughs> you just really need uh, to show this inner turmoil of these characters. Inside every person is a chaotic dragon kind. And also, also, <laughs> boobs. <laughs> and also, it's hot when girls choke each other. <laughs> like, that's, that's this director. <laughs> a T. <tea. laughs> and then, and then Abigail just shows up while they're wrestling. And it's yeah. like, I'm here. and I look Abigail I told you to stay put and then so and then and then Abigail and then Jezebel just has a guitar no 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 hang on hang on we didn't we just uh, she, they uh Abigail comes up with some important information she writes on the box oh yeah I know where Billy Gunn is yeah But but yes yes I was so glad you saw this. But but uh, whenever they they show it, they have a little erase part below it that says uh, it, was it was the, the only, only nice thing, thing she, she did, ever did. did. And, and then it's like a race, in clearly. the next scene, the next scene. <laughs> they use that. Can I see? They did that. They did them out of order, but couldn't be bothered to fully erase <laughs> the fucking board from the scene that they shot. That was out of. Oh my god! I saw it. And I was like, oh God damn it! Whenever I saw it, I was like, if this shows up in like later in the movie, uh, the, the next, next scene, scene. <laughs> like the very next moment, and then and then Jezebeth magically has voiped a guitar into the woods with her, yep. which she didn't have. Uh, and plays another entire song at Abigail here sitting on a bench. Yeah. I love too when she's singing the song to her, the, the girl just stares dead eyed, soulless, like right into her eyes the whole time she plays. She's just like. Not smiling, not just right into her eyes as she sings at her face. <laughs> and this is where the movie starts trolling us, Kyle. This is where the movie starts trolling us. This is the big shootout. This <laughs> are you, is are you talking like they're like, they're right, they're right over Yes! There. And it's just, it, it, it feels like they it's do, right out of Monty they Python. They do the Monty Python thing! Mill's making this too easy. There's no way this isn't on purpose. They <laughs> Billy, Billy and her people start walking through like a meadow mm. with their guns. And then our guys are standing at the edge of the meadow with their guns, standing out in the open. Yeah. Like they're right there. Yeah. I, I do love okay, so I had to talk about the scene where they all have guns pointed like pointed out. 
everybody is kind of in the same direction except for Jonah, who's like over. <laughs> he's like he's, everybody's like this. Yeah. And he's like that. And there's another scene where they're all standing there with their guns out, and he's like sleeping against the tree. <laughs> but there's one dude. I think it was the bar dude. Yeah, he has a revolver. And he holds it like this. Yeah. A revolver. <laughs> yeah. So they start walking across this meadow towards our people. And one, how do they see them? Because in relation to how, how do they not see them? Because in our thing, it seems like mm -hmm. they're right there. But they start walking across this meadow and they're like, here they come. And it's like the building. And then, and then it cuts to our guys watching them. <laughs> Mills making this too easy. And then it cuts back to Billy and her gang, and they have now teleported back to where they started. <laughs> and start walking forward again. And it is the scene from Monty Python where the guy's running with the sword. Ah, and then he keeps teleporting backward. straight minutes in this movie Kyle and I was like you're you're fucking with me uh, you're there's no way you're not the, fucking the shootout with me was like what 30 seconds of and they're oh dead. yeah it, 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 it's just they shoot at each other for 30 seconds and then they all die They just all die. And Abigail was there crouched in a in a bush. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Um, yo, the clock does come back a little bit because it hits high noon. Dun, dun, Obviously. Dun. You know it's the simplest thing that they never do in this movie? You're making a fucking shitty attempt at a Western. We don't get a single close-up of eyes at any point in this fucking... Mm -hmm. Like, what? Come on. Sir, come on, Sergio Leone. Just, just do, do something. But they all start shooting. Uh, also, I love she yells Billy first before... They have the drop on him. Jezebeth and mm -hmm. her gang have the drop, but before they shoot, she goes, Billy! <laughs> Sneak attack! <laughs> Billy! <laughs> yeah, literally. And they're like, ah, and they all shoot. Um, and, and they just kill him. They just kill her. And it, that's it. There's no, like, big dramatic, like, standoff or anything. They just shoot him a bunch, and they die. The hour of the gun is over. And Jezebeth walks over and says, the hour of the gun is over. And I was like, oh, thank God. Um, and again, at this point, we're an hour and five minutes into the movie. Yes. And I'm like, yes. what is going on here? And then the credits start to roll. And roll. And roll. <laughs> For like four or five songs. Yeah. Yeah. And we get we get the we get the we get the like individual credits of yeah. like the main cast yeah, the main and cast. extras. <laughs> and then they're like special appearance by these people. Our like, patron number nine. <laughs> no, that's just an extra. Yeah. But, but maybe it's like cameo. Nobody knows who the fuck these people are. They're just, the person who was in the background at the bar. Yeah. They they get like their own credit in the end of the movie, their own like on camera credit. Um, oh fuck! But they do also sequel bait. They sequel bait because they're like the little girl. They're like Abigail might not be what she seems. Dun, dun, and I was like, dun. I guess. But remember, this Abigail may not be who she seems, and the revenge. It comes with a price. But but we go through the whole cast, and then we go through, like, the uh, produ producer, director, writer, all that credit. And then it goes through the cast again. And then when it <laughs> ends, at one point, there's more of the girl on the swing. Yes. The girl on the swing that we already watched eight minutes of at the beginning of this movie comes back. 
this is a prank. Kyle, this movie's a prank. Uh, we were pranked by this movie. This is a rickroll of movies, um, and we fell for it. Uh, so well done, Damien Dante, you clever fuck. Got it. Got us. <laughs> Uh, this movie's bad, bad. This movie is atrocious. Uh, it's, it's this movie's not, not a movie. It's not a movie. This is one of the more not a movies that we've done in quite some time. Mm. Um, I p- I picked it because I had fond memories of elements of Jezebeth, uh, and this one does not. I don't it, remember. Not only does it not have that, it multiplies all the bad stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, And it's so, it, at least Jezebeth is somewhat capable of being followed narratively i mean and that's being incredibly generous yes. but this one is nothing like it's you can't follow any of it mm-hmm. it just jumps around it's it's nothing uh so it's bad bad and that's that's that um fuck fuck you damien Dante. <laughs> but brian as always, you can support us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash GBRBB. Support us for two, five, whatever bucks a month. Uh, that is all very helpful and super cool. Um, you can also uh, follow us on Twitch. Yes. Twitch.tv slash GBRBB underscore Kyle. Kyle underscore uh, Brian. Same thing. We um, both do different things. We now have competent computers and are able yeah. to do it. Um, well, we both upgraded our computers recently. Awesome. So Although, we can, uh, Although, I don't know about free time in the coming yeah. future. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Who knows how much time I have. Yeah. But we have comedy computers and stuff. Uh, I did a cooking stream a couple weekends ago. Mm, made pizza, pizza on camera, um, which was fun. Had people hang out. Uh, you should so have cooked it like on that. the center block. Honestly, yeah. I really... I mean, it was it was on a stone. It was just a pizza stone. Yeah. It was close. But yeah. <laughs> Put a cinder block in my oven. <laughs> yeah. It would actually probably work pretty well, like a pizza stone. But uh, yeah, so so you can check us out on Twitch. I have a podcast called This Film's Lit where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this is out, the one that will be out, we're smack dab in the middle of our Twilight Saga Eclipse. We're on the third one, Eclipse. We've done a Twilight. We've done New Moon. We'll be on Eclipse mm. when this is out. So you can go check that out and hear Katie and I talk about the Twilight movies. I think that's it. Until next time. Just keep watching. Just don't fucking don't stay watch. away. It's on Amazon. It's on Tubi. It's on tons of places. If you really want to waste your life and watch a 13-year-old's perspective of what it means to be like, yes, just relax. Uh, horny yeah, just go ahead. Just watch wrestle, wrestle, wrestle on the ground. Yeah. And then they're just going to be topless for this scene. And then we're going to have dead rats and shit. <laughs>